All right, in this section, we're gonna start covering passengers in or on vehicles. Now, a vehicle's carrying capacity is going to be indicated by a selection of letters that are at the bottom center of the counter, and they're going to indicate what type and how many of the carrying capacity the vehicle has. In this section of the video, we're gonna take and focus on vehicles that can carry units inside of them, and we'll cover vehicles that carry units on them in a later section. Units that can carry passengers in them are either going to have a single P, like this brand carrier, or a double P, like this German half track. Now, the carrying capacity for a single P vehicle is going to be one half squad, one support weapon, and one single man counter like I have laid out here. A double P is going to be able to get, uh, carry effectively double what a single P can carry. A full squad, two support weapons, and two single man counters. Non-machine gun weapon teams uh, can't be passengers. So you can put a machine gun weapon team in place of a full squad. Now, rarely you will have uh, instances where you'll have something like a 2PP or a 3PP. I've got an example for you on the uh, screen now, and that's simply going to double or triple the carrying capacity of a single PP vehicle. But keep in mind, when you go to disembark, you have to maintain stacking limitations at that point. Now, do keep in mind that units inside a vehicle that are being carried are not going to count against the stacking limits of the hex. So if all of these units were here inside this Bren uh, vehicle in the hex, it would only count as a single vehicle in the hex at that point. And you could still have another vehicle, more squads, more single man counters at that point. So whatever passengers are on or in the vehicles don't count against stacking limits for the hex itself. Now, if a vehicle is destroyed by anything but a close assault attack, a close assault attack will wipe out all the units that are passengers in the vehicle. But if it's destroyed by another means, then you're going to have to conduct a bailout check for the passengers in the vehicle. The bailout check is very simple to do. You're simply going to roll 1d6 for each counter that's in the vehicle. And if it's an even roll, then if it's a passenger, it will come out shaken with a moved marker. Or if it's a support weapon, it will survive the encounter. And if it's an odd roll, it'll be removed outright. And yes, that means that you do conduct bailout checks for support weapons that are being carried by the vehicle as well. So let's say our Bren carrier here was destroyed during an attack, you would replace it with a wrecked marker as normal, but then you would be conducting a bailout check for each of these three counters. Let's say we rolled even for this half squad and an odd for both of these here, the piper and the support weapon would be removed from the scenario and the half squad would be flipped to their shaken side and they would be marked with a moved counter at that point.